Tonight we continue our look at the history of some of our local media. This time we're looking at radio and Connecting Point producer Dave Fraser went out and talked with some veterans of local airwaves, including a couple of familiar TV faces you may have forgotten got their start on the radio dial. All right, right here on the Phil D program every weekday morning, AM 1520 and whizradio.com. Well, I began uh, in my high school days. I was interested in radio all my life and in music too. I got my start in radio in Hartford in the late 80s at WHCN, which at the time was a big, huge rock station. Every day we did obituaries. And this is, this, I mean, this is really old time, right? I remember, you know, we'd give the time as whatever, and Ron, Ron would do the time as 12.55, time for today's obituaries. <laughs> My first paying job was at WMAS in Springfield for $2 an hour. Uh, I was 19, I got hired there, and I thought it was the greatest thing going. And I ended up uh, getting an internship at a radio station in Framingham, WKOX and WBBF, and they hired me after my internship, and the rest is history. I've been doing this for over 30 years. My first full-time commercial job in radio was back in 1968 at WHYN Radio uh, right in Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, 560 AM. Wind time <laughs> is three and a half minutes out to three o'clock here on the Phil D Show. Afternoon during my program, Daryl Gould, who had a very unique voice and uh, put that personality touch in. When it was time to go back to the music, okay, let's play some more tunes, Phil. And so uh, we tied it together with uh, with personality. Cat Sinclair, Cozy and the Horn, Litch, uh, Kim Alexander, the Concert Kid, and just the feeling of family. You end up loving your coworkers, and they do feel like your brothers and sisters and family. I was in a newsroom working with these seasoned professionals. Durham Caldwell, who was our news director, Ron Russell, who had been there for many years, and he was the morning drive time voice of WHYN. And people smoked in those days, and I remember, you know, working, and there were people on either side of you smoking, uh, the AP machines going off, the UPI machines going off, uh, the, the radio announcer down in the other booth saying, you know, two minutes, the news time. And so there was a lot of, lot of excitement going on within the newsroom itself. There really wasn't a lot of technology, and I mean, it was, you know, we'd play records and we'd play commercials, and I mean, we had turntables, and now it's all digitized, and back then it was all done manually, and it was all live. That was the other part of it, too. When I was uh, the news director for a, a radio station in Springfield, WHYN, I had a new staff of four full-time and four part-time people. These days, radio isn't like that. You have one person running a news station program that preceded my music show, Request Program, was a CBS soap opera. So when that ended, on came this modern rock music of the day program, popular music. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Stardust Ballroom here at Mountain Park. Phil D. from WHYN welcoming you to another Friday night dance. Well, the biggest crossover with radio and TV, uh, they came up with this uh, Dick Clark type program on a Saturday afternoon. They didn't want to take me off the radio, but they wanted me to co-host the TV show. And there was a spell where the times collided. So they said, put on a long record, come in the studio. So I'd go in there, and, hey, nice to be here today, and uh, let's dance to Chubby Checkers, The Twist. And I'd run like hell, I'd go back to the studio. The record was ending. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Talk about involvement of uh, in both stations being involved with each other. That was quite something. Which is WRSI.com, and uh, let us know what you liked. I think radio is still important because it's local. It connects us. I think it makes us able to hear each other without visual distractions. And I think sometimes that's the best way to communicate. I was willing to, to travel anywhere for that first job. You know, you want to get that first job in the business, you're eager. And I was looking toward radio, and I would be willing to travel anywhere. And it just so happened that, that that first job came along right in my hometown. It's a really small, intimate audience that you're speaking to. And we take that very seriously as, as broadcasters. It, it's meaningful to us to be able to, to have that intimate connection with our audience. Well, you, you, you put a record on here, put the needle on it, get it all set to play, push a button, it starts up, 
and it goes out over the air and all these people are listening to what you're doing. I mean, it kind of blew my mind. If I could go back, uh, it was just an innocent time because everything was brand new. And uh, it, was just a, a, it was just a fun time. And the people we worked with were our friends. So we not only worked together, we played together. And, uh, and it's, it's to be able to go back to that would be great, but I guess you can't go back. Touching so many people through what I do every day means everything. My goal before I walk in this room every day, I take a moment and think I just want to make people's lives a little bit better.